Welcome to another Mr. James Accounting Tutorial. Today's topic is wages, salaries, and payroll. Let's get right into it. Okay, it's the past people problem, and uh, we, are, we will read what is required first using the form provided below. Calculate the income after tax for each employee. And this here is the form provided below, and they would like us to fill out this column here. Okay, and that's really the body of the question. Three employees working in the Google country earn gross monthly income as follows. That's Dabo, 1400 E. Jacob, 2400 R. Sharp, 8000 Okay, so that's their gross income for the month. In Google country, the first 2500 earned is treated as non-taxable income. Earnings above 2500 is subjected tax at various rates as follows. Taxable income between 1 and 2500, 0%. Okay, this means this is non-taxable. Okay. Taxable income between 2500 and 5000, 15%. And taxable income between 5001 and over, 50%. Now, in the form here, I've already calculated the taxable income for you. Okay, we took the gross income from here. I'll fill it in here. And then we look at the non-taxable income, which is 2500 So that from here, between $1 and 2500 And we fill it in here, but the EJ cup, there's a difference. EJ cup does not make as much as 2500 He makes... 2400 so we put his entire income as non-taxable our shop 2500 now to get the taxable income we take what is in the gross income column and minus what is in the non-taxable income so we get the income that is subjected to tax here so 4800 minus 25 gives us 23 2400 minus 2400 gives us zero, so he does not pay any tax, he has no taxable income. And 8000 minus 2500 gives us 5500. Okay, so um, we will now attempt to calculate the income tax after tax for each employee. Right, first we take S Dabo 2300 and we multiply it by 15% equal 345. The taxable income is between 2501 and 5000, and then you check up so he pays no taxes and our shop as 2,500 at 15% that is in this category and another 2,500 or 3,000 rather in this category here 30% okay so this will work out to 375 and this will work out to 900 when we add two together we get 1275 so we take these now and we fill out the form there a zero for ej cup 345 for s double and 1275 in income tax to get the income after tax we take 48 and minus the 345 and we get 4455 to get the income after tax for him, we do the same thing. This time his income tax is zero, so he remains at 2400 
income after tax. Eight hundred, eight thousand, sorry, minus twelve seventy-five gives us six thousand seven hundred and twenty-five. That take care of this table. We continue with the next part. Part B, other compulsory deductions from income included. And we are given the national insurance, 5% of gross pay, health insurance, 4% of taxable income, and pension contribution, 1% of gross pay. These are all called deductions, and they are compulsory deductions or uh, deduction by law. Using the form provided below, calculate the net income for each employee. So we are the first put in these deductions in the appropriate columns here, total them, and then minus it from the income tax to get the net pay. So but in order to do that, we need to bring across certain information from the last part as the taxable income and the income after tax. First, we put in the income after tax here. 4455, 6725, 2400. And next, we will calculate the national insurance. It's 5% of gross pay. Davo. 5% of 4,800. So that's 240. Then the health insurance is 4% of taxable income. That's give us 92. The taxable income is 2,300 in this case. And 1% uh, of gross pay for pension contribution, 1% of 4,800. And that's 48 there. And we will add these three next in the total here. We add them up, we will get 380. And we'll take that 380 now and minus it from the income after tax here to get the net P. Okay, so first we total the, the deductions. And we put them in the total deduction column. Now we take that total deduction and minus it from the income after tax to get the net P here. Okay, so we do the same for the other two. For Jacob, 5% of gross pay is 5% of 2400. That gives us 120. Then 4% of taxable income. His taxable income is zero, so the health of the child should be zero. And pension contribution, 1% of gross pay, 1% of 2,400. That's 24 dollars. And again, we add these three columns, national insurance plus health insurance plus pension contribution, and we get 144. So we take the 144 from the income after tax, and we get the net pay of 22.56 and then we have our sharp uh, national insurance 5% of gross pay will be 5% of 8,000 and that will give us 400 and health insurance 4% of taxable income will be 4% of 5,500 and will give us 20 Sorry, 220, and then we have the 1% of gross pay for the pension contribution will be $80. Again, we add the three columns for national insurance, health surcharge, and pension contribution, and we get $700. We take $700 total deduction, and we minus it from the income after tax, and we get the net fee of 
6025. So that takes care of part B and we move along to part C. Part C. Distinguish between statutory and non-statutory deduction. Statutory deductions are compulsory by law, while non-statutory deductions are optional by the employee. Statutory deductions will include things like PAYE, tax, health surcharge, national insurance in Trinidad and Tobago while non-statutory deductions would include things like uh, pension plans and credit unions and club and so on that the employee may belong to and he wants to deduct a fee from. Name three basic source documents of the Bureau. So we have time cards, time books, electronic clock cards, employee earning records, and uh, we may wonder why we don't have payslip in here, but payslip is not a source document, but it comes at the other end of the payroll system. If you found this video to be helpful and you would like to see more of them, Please give it your thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel so that you can have notification whenever a new video is coming out.